So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the key stage 3 GCSE Maths topic of finding the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of numbers written as a product of their primes. Now often when asked to find the lowest common multiple or the LCM and the highest common factor the HCF of large numbers the numbers may already be written as a product of their primes. Now when this is done we can use these to complete a Venn diagram and find the LCM and HCF using the Venn diagram which is covered in a previous video however there is a much quicker way of doing this now before we get started on showing you how to do this let's just have an example of the types of questions that are going to be covered in this particular video so the first one is find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor of 11,340 and 3,432 and as I'm sure you can appreciate that these are very, two very large numbers to work with now, if we have a question where it asks, find the LCM and the HCF of A and B, where A equals, and then we've got a number that's written as a product of their primes, this question and the one previous to it are actually both the exact same question. And the reason for that is because of the fact that 11,340 is basically 2 squared multiplied by 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7, and 3,432 is 2 cubed times 3 times 11 times 13. Now a little reminder that if this was on a calculator paper then all you'll need to do on your calculator particularly if you've got a Casio calculator is find the little fact function so if I enter the number so 11340 press equals and then press shift and then if I can just see where it says fact it will then convert the number as a product to their primes and as you can see it's exactly what I've written there. So again, these two questions are exactly the same. However, they may not look like it because one is using the actual numbers and the other is using the number written as a product of their prime. Now to find the HCF and the LCM of either ridiculously large numbers or numbers written as a product of their primes, then all we need to do is follow these three steps for each of the HCF and the LCM respectively. Now, at face value, these steps may make absolutely zero sense to you at all, but don't worry, we're going to go through some examples where I'll go through each of these three steps individually and you can see how we get the final answer. So for the HCF, the first step you want to do is to highlight the common prime bases. The second step then is to take the smallest power of those highlighted and then what we with those particular numbers that we've highlighted, multiply these numbers together, including their powers together or write as a product of their primes, depending on how you want your answer written. So some questions might ask for the actual value. Some questions might ask you to write your answer in index form, which basically means write it as a product of their primes. For the lowest common multiple, this first step is exactly the same. So you want to highlight the common prime bases. Of those highlighted, you want to cancel or just delete the lowest power of each of those numbers. And then for the third step here, we multiply all the numbers remaining excluding those that are being cancelled or we can write as a product of their primes. So now, so now let's have a look at some example questions. So I've just put made a little note of each of the steps and I'll go through each of the steps as we go through each of the individual questions. So looking at question one, so it says to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor of each of these numbers. And again, for every single one of these four examples, I've written each of the numbers as a product of their primes. So if you were given an integer, you just do a factor tree or use your calculator to write the product of their primes, and you can then use this method. So let's have a look for at question one. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the highest common factor first. So find the highest common factor. The first thing we need to do is looking at X and Y, it says to highlight the common base or the common prime bases. So for this, you can see that in both X and Y, I've got twos. So let me just circle the twos very carefully. I've got fives and I've got thirteens. So that's the first step done. The next step says to take the smallest power of those highlighted. So looking at the twos, the smallest power is a three. Then looking at the fives, the smallest power is a one. And looking at the thirteens, the smallest power is 13 to the power of one. So here is my final answer. Now, if I wanted to, I could simply work that out. So it's going to be eight times five times 13 which is 520. So depending on how they want the answer to be written, so for an exam, in an exam, they would particularly specify how they want the answer to be written. So this 
is writing a number as a product of their primes and this is writing as an integer. Now sometimes the question might say give your answer in index form but that just also means product of their primes. So then to find the lowest common multiple this time of question one. So here it says highlight the common primes which is what I've done here. So again highlighted what I've done in blue in the blue circles and it says of these highlighted cancel the lowest term. So if I just cancel the lowest term so that out of the twos two cubed out of the fives it's just a single five and out of the thirteens the smallest power is single 13. So then all that's left for me to then do for the lowest common multiple is basically multiply everything that's left that's not been cancelled. So here it's going to be 2 to the power of 7 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 5 to the power of 4 multiplied by 7 squared multiplied by 13 squared. Now again if I write that as an integer if I just type that into my calculator because that is going to be 1 huge number. I don't think it'll even come up on the calculator but let's see if it does. Times 7 squared times 13 squared and it gives me a number, it actually does, of 59623121234. So again I personally would say that they would probably ask the answer to be written as a, an index form as a product to their primes rather than writing this number which will clearly be on a calculator paper. So that's how we can find the HCF and the LCM using this particular method. So again if I just rub that up just so we've got a bit of space and now let's try another question. Now if that made absolute sense if you want to pause the video to have an attempt and see if you get the same answer then you can do so now uh, but otherwise you can just pause at any time you want. So looking at question two. So here finding the HCF first. So again I'm highlighting the common bases so I've got threes in both I've got fives in both I've got elevens in both and that's it so for the HCF what I want to do is take the smallest of those powers so the smallest here is going to be three cubed out of the fives it's five to the power of four and out of the elevens it's 11 cubed so there is my answer in index form for the lowest common multiple again here I just highlight the common bases which I've done I'm then going to delete the smallest power so from the threes it's three to the power three from the fives it's five to the power four now the elevens it's 11 cubed and then I just multiply everything that's left so that's going to be two cubed multiplied by three to the power six multiplied by 5 to the power of 8, multiplied by 11 to the power of 8, multiplied by 13 squared, multiplied by 17. And again, if you can, try and write the base numbers in numerical order, going from smallest to largest. But in a written exam, it really shouldn't be a problem if you do mix it up. It'll just annoy your marker. So then moving on to question 3. So let's just create a bit of space. And go for a different colour. Let's go for well, not much of a choice here, so let's just go for purple. So for question three, the HCF. So again, I highlight the common bases. So I've got twos, I've got threes, I've got I haven't got fives, I've got sevens, and that's it. So for the HCF, we're going to take the smallest power. So that's going to be two to the power of one, three squared and 7 squared so there is my answer for that one and then for the LCM here I take away the smallest power and that's that done and again what you might want to do is probably just get rid of them a bit clearer but just make sure there's nothing else of the question left so the LCM is going to be 2 cubed times 3 to the power of 11 multiplied by 5 to the power of 8 7 to the power of 4 multiplied 11 multiplied by 13 and there is my answer for that one. Then moving on to our final one, let's see if this colour's actually this colour's not too bad. So number four. So we're going for the HCF. So again highlighting the common bases. I've got threes in both. I've got fives in both. I've got sevens in both. I've got elevens in both. And I've also got thirteens in both. 
So the HCF just taking the smallest out of the ones highlighted. So that's going to be 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 5 to the power of 4 multiplied by 7 squared multiplied by 11 times 13 squared. Then for the lowest common multiple, I get rid of the smallest power. And then just multiply everything that's left. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 to the power of 11 multiplied by 5 to the power of 16 multiplied by 7 to the power of 13 multiplied 11 to the power of 4 multiplied by 13 to the power of 5. And there you can see, pretty easy, it's just a case of just drawing some circles around some numbers and picking the right ones. So now let's have a look at some past exam questions. Now these questions were taken from a GCSE paper. So let me just scroll back and let's have a go at those. I don't know why this keeps resetting, but hopefully you can see it on your screen. I'll just zoom in a little bit slowly there. So question one, it says, circle the highest common factor of 4x squared y times and 8xy cubed. So here if I just write them out, say 4 times x squared times y, and we've got 8 times x times y cubed. Now just because we're using algebra, the bases are written as letters rather than numbers, the technique is exactly the same. So for the highest common factor, what we're going to do is highlight the things that are both the same. Well, I can convert the 4 and the 8 as 2 to the squared, and that's going to be 2 cubed. So let's just get rid of that and get rid of that. So then looking at this, we circle the common basis. So we've both got 2s in both. We've got x's in both. And we've got y's in both. So for the high HCF, we're going to take the smallest of each of those. So the HCF so the smallest power of 2 is 2 squared, the smallest power of x is x, and the smallest power of y is y. So what we're looking for here is 2 squared, which is 4xy, so it's our second answer. For b, it says find the lowest common multiple of 4x squared and 8xy cubed. So again, what we've got here, if I just use what I've got here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the lowest power of each. So here I get rid of the 2 squared, I get rid of the x, and I get rid of the y. So for the H, the LCM, I multiply everything that's left. So that's going to be 2 cubed times x squared times y cubed. So I'm looking for 8x squared y cubed, which is our third option. Then for question two, it says x equals 2 squared times 3 times 5 and y equals 2 times 3 squared times 5 squared. And the question says find the highest common factor of each of these two. So again, circling the common factors, well, they've all, they're all common, so it doesn't really matter which ones I'm highlighting. So for the HCF, I'm taking the smallest power of each of those common prime factors. So here we're looking at the smallest power of 2, which is 2 to the power of 1. The smallest power of 3, which is 3, and the smallest power of 5, which is just single 5, and 2 times 3 times 5, so that's 6 times 5, which is 30. And again, it doesn't say index form, so I can write it in any way that I want, but I'm going to write it as 30 because I can actually work that out. The next one is to find the least common multiple of x and y. So for this, we've got our common factors of each, which are this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the lowest power. So the lowest power of the 2 is 2, lowest power of the 3 is 3, and the lowest power of 5 is just single 5, and then multiply the numbers together. So it's 2 squared times 3 squared times 5 squared, so that's 4 times 9 times 25. And again, I can either word that out with a calculator or without a calculator, depending on which paper it's on, but the answer there gives me 900. Well, actually, we could then do 4 times 25, which is 100 times 9, and it gives us 900. So if I didn't have a calculator, I could still easily work it out. Moving on to question 3, it says Q and R are two numbers as a product of their prime factors. Here we've got this. So it says the highest common factor of HCF uh, of, the highest of Q 
and R is 4056, find the value of A. So looking at, ignoring this 4056 for the time being, for HCF, if you remember, is we highlight the common factors. So we've got twos, threes, and A's in all of those. So we want to take the smallest power. So here at the twos, it's two cubed. The smallest power of three, which is single three, and the smallest power of A, which is A squared. And that equals 4056. Now, if we simplify this, we get eight times three times A squared equals 4056. That then gives me 24 A squared equals 4056. Five, six. If I divide both sides by 24, I get an answer of 169. So A squared equals 169. So A equals the square root of 169. So A is going to equal 13. Then moving on to, we're actually, uh, no, can't equal plus or minus 13. I'm going to just go for positive 13. Then moving on to question B, it says find the, work out the lowest common multiple of Q and R. So again, for this, we take away the smallest power of twos, which is that, the lowest power of three, and the lowest power of A squared, and then we multiply what's left. So here we've got two to the power of four, multiplied by three squared, multiplied by A cubed. So then from this, well, we know that A equals 13. So then what we can then write is 2 to the power of 4, which is 2, 4, 8, 16, multiplied by 9, multiplied by 13 cubed. And again, I can assume that this one is going to be on a calculator paper. So this is going to be 16 times 9 times whatever 13 cubed is, which is 2, 1, 9, 7. And then if I type that all into my calculator, I get an answer of 316368. And then moving on to our last question, it says work out the lowest common multiple. Now again, we can either do the normal way of doing this or we can convert both numbers as a product of their primes. Now 120 as a product of their primes, either using a factor tree or using a calculator is 2 cubed times 3 times 5 and 144 can be written as 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 squared. Now the lowest common multiple, so again we highlight the common basis. We take away, we sorry, we cancel out the smallest power and then we multiply together what's left. So two to the power of four times three squared multiplied by five, and then it's just a case of working out. So two to the power of four is 16 times nine times five. And if I work that out, whether, whether it be a calculator or without a calculator, I get an answer of 720.